Hello and welcome everyone to a new video about the animation Curve Editor. Today, I would like to talk with you about all the news and the progress we did on the animation Curve Editor, or ACE for short. Um, we spent the last couple of months working on finishing the editor, to make sure that it can help you solve your animation uh, questions. Okay, so without further ado, let's just jump into the code to see what we're going to have in store for today. All right, so I prepared this tiny, uh, simple uh, playground where we have five pillars and one sphere right there. So to create the marble here, the sphere, I just created a sphere with a, a PBR material that is super reflective. And I also generated five pillars with a wood material. So nothing really fancy right here. What I would like to just do right now is to use the animation curve editor to edit from scratch a new animations because now what are my options if i want to animate my um, marble here i can use the physics engine but that may be too much for my needs right i may not want to have a full-fledged animation using all the physics and gravity and stuff like that what i want actually is for my um, marble to rebound on each single pillar so to do that i'm gonna invoke the animation curve editor so let's see that i'm gonna first call the inspector right here and I'm gonna select my marble. If I scroll down here, I can see that there is no animation so far, and that's super fine. We're gonna create a new one out of nowhere. All right, here is the animation curve editor. It's empty so far, and what I can do actually is create a new animation with this plus button. Here, I'm gonna name it, for instance, a Boeing. And Boeing, uh, this animation will actually be animating the position of my marble, okay? Uh, here we did some changes since the last time I did my uh, since my previous video. Uh, this time we do not ask you to type the property if you don't want to. We are uh, automatically um, filling that list here with a list of all the potential pro uh, um, properties you want to animate. Okay, and with the three main one at the beginning, so position, rotation, and scale. So let's go with position. Okay. So it's a vector three animation, okay? And here um, I have uh, my, my sphere that I would like to animate, okay? The first thing I'm gonna do is actually make sure that um, if I play the animation right now, you see it starts from zero and it goes to one, okay? So it's not exactly what I want. So the, the, the first thing I'm gonna do is to uh, prepare the default values uh, at the beginning and at the end. So here I know that I want my sphere to start at uh, a specific coordinate for x and for x the coordinate i want is actually minus three, three minus three okay for y i want my uh coordinate to be six see and you can see live that the animation curve editor lets you actually update the object with the animations okay and if i go back to my animation so starting at six on the y-axis starting at minus three on the x-axis and actually at zero for z. One thing I'm gonna do immediately is actually take z here and move it at the end at zero as well. So z will remain flat. There is no animation on the z plane. Okay. For um, And that's gonna be it for now. Let's now move to the next step. The next step will be to do the first keyframe. And the first keyframe um, can be recorded. That's something very new that we added uh, thanks to uh, Pirate G JC who actually asked that a lot. So uh, we decided it's gonna be a good idea. You can actually extract the value from the real scene. Let me show you how. I'm gonna go in my real scene here and animate my sphere, right? To move it where I want it to be at that specific keyframe. And if I go back to my curve animator, uh, curve animation here, I can just click this new key button, right? And it will extract the value from the scene, meaning that we're going to have this animation. Boop, boop, all right. Then from there, I want to move to my next animation. My next position, my next keyframe will be actually right there. OK, so same story. I'm going to capture a new key right here. But there is something a little bit weird here. It's going to work that way, right? And that's not exactly what I want. I want a rebound. And for that, let me introduce you with the notion of tangents. The tangents will define how the curve will behave between two keyframes. So here it's linear, OK? But what I may want to do is actually to make that non-linear, right? And so I can take my uh, uh, point here. Oh, sorry. I was uh, debugging my code, so I have some breakpoints which are enabled right now. I'm going to just turn them off. Okay. 
And so I can move my uh, curve here that way. Okay. And so I can also come here and maybe change that to have a beautiful bounce. So let's see that again. If I play that, I'm going to go there and boom, bounce where I want to go. Perfect. Okay. Let's move to the next stop. Next stop will be uh, around here, like somewhere like there. Okay. And same story. Okay. I'm going to capture a new key from there. Okay. And again, I may want to have a beautiful bounce, something like that. Here, interesting point. I may want to move this one. Sorry. I may want to move this one, but not this one, not the other one. And for that, I have to ask Babylon to break the tangents so they are not linked anymore. So I'm going to break the tangents. And so now I can move the right part without controlling the left part. Okay. And I'm going to do probably the same here to enable a beautiful bounce like that. All right. Let's move to the next stop. Going to be around here. And now you get the point. We're going to also capture a new point, making sure that we have a good bounce that coming from here. And I'm going to make it bounce pretty high like that. And finally, we're going to move to the last stop somewhere around, I would say, there. Okay. And again, introduce a keyframe. Okay. Same story for my uh, Y axis. I want to have a bounce on it. So let me make that bounce. Make sure I'm breaking my tangent, controlling the right one to get a nice curve like that. And finally, I'm going to just make sure that my Y and my X at the end remain flat, right? So here I want to finish at 0, 3, 4, 0, 3, 4 for that, this one. And here I want to finish at 4, 96. Okay, no problem, 4, 96. And that's pretty much it. Let's play that and see if it works. Boing, 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 boing. Look at that. Isn't that perfectly animated, right? All of that now can be saved, and that's the, all, all the power of it, right? You can obviously edit live in your scene, but more interestingly, you can save it. And you can save it to a file or to the snippet server. So if I'm saving that to the snippet server, I'm going to get a unique ID that I can capture here, okay? And so let me just reload that PG here to get to a state where uh, there is no animation again, okay? So I can see that I have my uh, node here. My mar marble is here, but there is no animation attached. Perfect. Okay. So let me go here and I may need to move my code a little bit so you guys can see it. Excellent. So here we're going to load the animation. So load animation. To do that, I'm going to say load let animations is equal to Babylon dot animation dot create from snippet async. Here, I'm going to give the um, unique ID I got from the snippet server, okay? And that is returning a promise. I don't want to use the promise here. So what I'm going to do is simply flag my entire function as asynchronous, meaning that I have the option to use the await keyword. The await keyword will make some asynchronous code looks like it's, as it's synchronous from the developer standpoint, meaning it's going to wait here for that function to execute and then get back to my code. It's exactly what I want. And now I can see, OK, scene begin direct animation like that. And please uh, do that on my marble object. OK, and which animation to use? The one that I just loaded from key 0 to key 100. And please loop. If I'm running that, and you know what? I'm going to just close the um, inspector as we don't need it anymore and just run that way. Boom, 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 boom. Literally two lines of code. One that's fantastic, right? Now you may ask, okay, what if I want to edit it? Now I, I was using begin and direct animation. And so the animation will not be reported here in my inspector. That's fine. You can still load from the snippet server. That's one option, right? So you can go to your marble here and actually call the animation curve editor and please load from my um, snippet server from the ID I store before. That's an option, right? The other option is actually to say don't use direct animation, which start an animation from a random uh, animation array and apply that to a target. What I can do is use begin animation this time, meaning that I can first 
need to store the animations on my object. Okay, so the object will knows will knows about will know about this animation. So obviously, the um, wait 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 yeah, and remove the animation from here. Obviously, so it works the same. But now in my inspector here, if I look at my marble, I have a one animation that you can see here. Okay, and I can edit it. And that's live, right? So you can edit it live here and say, okay, I want to move, I don't know, this one there. And you see that the animation is actually uh, moving live. Uh, and so I can do something like, I don't want to bounce, let's say, between these two. So I'm going to break that tangent here, make sure that this one here is linear, pointing to the other key, breaking that tangent again, making sure that this one is linear. And so here I will not have a bounce. Like, okay, I prefer that. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, zoop. That's my new version. I can save it to the snippet server, obviously, right? And that's the magic of it. If I edit that again, I can come to my save button here. There is a snippet ID already assigned, perfect. I can save that. It's gonna generate me a new version, a H1 here. Say, okay, but look at that. It also changed that for you directly in your code here. You have nothing to do. The inspector was smart enough to upgrade, to update the, uh, the playground. And so playing that work. And so I can save my playground with a new ID and boom, it's out, it's live. You edited your animation. You don't even have to write the code for that. The animation curve editor will provide you with a visual way of doing it. And you can save it in a file, load it from a file, save it to a snippet server, load it from a snippet server. And even when play playing with the snippet server, when you change stuff on the snippet server, your code could be updated. It's fantastic, right? I love it. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you liked it. Feel free to use our forum to ask any question. I'm Delta Koch on the forum, so feel free to ping me if you have uh, any question regarding all of that. I wish you a very good day and see you soon. Bye.